हेलो एवरीवन प्लीज ज्वाइन मी वेलकमिंग मिस्टर सुरेश मारू मेंबर अपाचे सॉफ्टवेयर फाउंडेशन एंड मिस्टर रोमन सोफनिक वाइस प्रेसिडेंट अपाचे बिग टॉप बिग टॉप एंड ओवर टू यू थैंक्स एवरीवन एंड गुड आफ्टरनून होपफुली यू गाइस सरवाइव थ्रू द कोल्ड एट द ट्रक्स द फूड ट्रक्स सो before like you now we get started like you now just uh, trying to introduce guys like you now we have like in you know, a three part or like you now you can consider like in you know, a four part uh, talks about the incubators today like you know here like you know i i'll start i'll go first and just introduce uh, the incubation like aspects and the basic definition roman nicely called it like in you know, a tasty sausage part of of the talk and then he's going to do the sausage factory of it like you know giving a, like you no know, going through the more and more mechanics of the incubation and going through a little more of the anatomy of the ipmc and sir and then uh, and then uh, we and we want to keep this really interactive because as uh, of course like we need to briefly take a note of like you know what the interest in from the audience but uh, that's more to be the interactive like you know where we expect all of you will participate and then of course like you know, there'll be a follow up talk like you know we have uh, not directly follow up but a related and much more in depth talk by marvin like you know later in the day uh, marvin is here so we're leaving out a lot of details like you know to marvin and we'll just keep hand waving here uh, to go on there so with that i'll start first and then so with roman's tasty sausage part and then like you now we'll basically go over like the inc the incubator aspects of it like you know what kind of what you look for like you now if you're bringing a project from incubation from a github uh, into bringing into the apache itself or if you are already like you know part of a project who is very like, incubating it and what kind of you look for and so on so before go too far like can we just get a brief sense of like you know uh, whom we have here so how many have uh, already uh, follow the general mailing list or or some kind of uh, been through the incubation or like you know been part of the incub current incubation pod link here or uh, to start uh, yeah please how many are part of it here i see jim here also so the rest of them like haven't been uh, through the incubation or new to the apache community that's that's really great audience like you know good like you know because me and uh, roman too are like you no know, kind of a new bees into this program we, of course we have jim like you no know, to we can go back to if you uh, if you cannot answer anything but like you know so it's good to then like you know i think uh, we can we try to keep the balance like you know on like giving introduction to the incubation aspects itself and also going over with a lot of assumptions that if you are going through the process what you will learn. so this gives us a general idea that we probably want to touch more and more on the introductory aspects of it so start start with first like you know uh, the board charted the incubation like you know with a clear goal here like you know i let you read the formal charter here but like briefly summarizing the incubation uh, is a process like you know or is probably the only uh, <coughs> uh, process like you know where like a, a project can come entirely fresh and then get started incubate and then like you know get into the apache thing and then the incubation process like you know will emphasize the project on the community grooming aspects and then uh, more importantly uh mentor the project until the project is self sufficient and self uh govern the project can govern themselves and then at that point the project di directly reports to the board so and like uh, and then this in the process and the steps of bringing in a project is like you, know, you can like briefly summarize again more importantly we did not want to stay too much on the slides so that they'll get lost but more we are throughout the slides you will see that we will constantly be pointing to the incubator documentation and we constantly encourage you guys like you know if you are interested in bringing a project over or going through the process refer to the documentation and help uh, pointing out if anything is not clear on the mailing list so the way it starts is like you know, if you have an idea or a pro or an existing project in github or elsewhere you start first like you know bringing the uh, like finding a right champion and if you already know someone like you know from the community or otherwise you can just ask on the general mailing list like you no know, here this is a project i'm interested in or like you know, we are interested in and we think there may be a community most likely most of the projects who uh, come into the incubation already have some kind of a community already grown up uh, at least initially bootstrapped with it but there are projects which come like you no know, bare bones and some come from um an existing company like you no know, donating a, a, a code a part of a code base or like you no know, coming from academia or, and, and so on 
So, and then like, you know, uh, when you start creating a proposal and we go over like, you know, what constitutes a basic proposal and then uh, and the highlights of the templates here. And then like, you know, you'll find a sponsor. The sponsor here being, uh, if, if, you are, if you think that a project is already related to a project like a Hadoop, like you think that is adding a Hadoop, you want to first check with the Hadoop PMC if this, uh, if this fits in an umbrella anywhere or like, like that. But Apache is increasingly like, you know, uh, the foundation is not, uh, the, uh, the board, the foundation is uh, increasingly discouraging the umbrella projects and then more and more wants to see more top level projects so, so that uh, the projects can directly govern and directly report to the board and so on. So in, the, in, those, in all those cases, the sponsor will be the Apache incubation, the incubator PMC, uh, the project will be the sponsor. And then once you uh, find pro and the, uh, have a champion and, and you know like know where the destination is, you start recruiting mentors. So your champion like you know uh, will help you uh, to recruit mentors. Or again, uh, um, if you are always like welcome to uh, send an email to the general at uh, the general mailing list, uh, that's the kind of all the hang for all hangout places for incubation during and after. The, uh, before coming to the incubator and during and after like you know for any questions, that's the uh, one. One stop shop place like you know you can go to and you can uh, you can ask there for uh, mentors as well. Most likely like you know by then if you have a proposal really sketched out like you know it will make it easy for mentors to find an interest like you know what they find interesting in the project and then uh, and the community aspects maybe the technical aspects maybe and then sign up as, as mentors. And then once you have uh, all of this laid out, uh, then you'll call for a vote like you know most. Mostly, again, here your champion and uh, mentors will help through going through this process, and then you'll call for a vote. And then, when the incubation uh, PMC uh, decides uh, or votes for saying this could be a potential good community and has all the right elements in it, uh, <coughs> a project is like you knock out now, it's called a podling. And once the podling is created, I, again, before I go to the creation pass, like you know, basically, what uh, here is uh, again. Uh, the point is, is uh, you'll see the details are a little bit overwhelming here, a big list of it, but like, you, know, you can go through the, the incubator documentation uh, at that website to find uh, details on what each of those should be, and then like, you know, look for examples uh, from uh, the previous incubation proposals and so on. So calling out few of these items, like, you know, if, you look, if you look at it, like, you, know, you really need to want to provide like, you know, why you are interested in bring this project over, like, you know, uh, What's your goal? Like, you know, are you uh, serious about building a community? And like, you know, where do you have the existing code, uh, the existing infrastructure? And then, what do you want? Like, you know, the Apache infrastructure to be set up, like the like, like the mailing list, uh, website, and so on, which we'll go over a little more detail. And 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 kind of um, some of the uh, existing like relationship with other Apache projects, like things like that, will help out to call attention from the right people and then like, you know, or even like, you know, weigh in on either the community or technical aspects of, of the projects you are trying to bring on board. So again, like, you know, please refer to the documentation for each all of, uh, all of these items and then like, you know, and for examples as well. And then let's say like, you know, um, you got through the, you filled in the proposal, got through all the voting and then now a, a portaling is set up. Like the first thing like, you now you'll notice is, You'll be working with the Apache infrastructure team and then setting up your project. So, uh, and then again, uh, this refers back to your proposal. So you want to start the, during the proposal state. We are you're encouraged to start thinking about them. Uh, the mailing list. Uh, most of the incubation uh, broadling only have development mailing list to call out the right attention. And then we'll um, I'll defer some of those details. Again, I'm calling out Marvin too much here, but because he he's covering the best ifs and don'ts and so on. <laughs> on what to do, what not to do, and how, how better to engage the community. So we'll not go over them in detail here, but uh, again, like, you know, we'll, um, the mailing list, the website, wikis, the issue tra the Jira issue tracker, uh, and then of course, like, you know, the choice between an SVR or a Git repository, and then, and also, like, you know, where if you're bringing in code from an existing repository, you can import it back, import directly with the history, all the commit history, and so on. Uh, and of course, like you know, once you have the basic project and infrastructure set up, you will start uh, coding and then like you know, continue hacking on your project and continue with your ideas and what you do best. But more importantly, before graduation, the other things like you know, and then you know, your mentors will be constantly reminding is the community engagement aspects. 
more, again, like in the, the emphasis on community and then not more about the code. Mentors will not be watching so much on like, you know, what kind of a code you are looking at and that's deferred to the project, the modeling itself. But more like, you know, the mentors will be serious, uh, taking a key uh, attention to how you are engaging, how, how much is the modeling welcoming new contributions. And, and then like more importantly, like, you know, the tendency like, you know, for projects which come from a uh, one like in a centered location where more, most of the PBM, the podling, uh, the comm committers are from a BATA company or being it from the tendency is to go back to their whiteboards and uh, and face to face hallway discussion. So like you know, when the Apache, the, the first philosophy you'll learn within the Apache philosophy is if it didn't happen in the mailing list, it didn't happen. So constantly encouraged to see, make sure like you know, all the decisions are happening on the mailing list. Um, and even though like you know the closed door discussions are happening, at least the decisions have to be happened on the mailing list. So everything has to be summarized and increasingly uh, use of the collaboration tools, like you know, whenever you're having a discussion um, in the hallway and also and more and more engage other, the rest of the community members and so on. And uh, uh, be, I mean, one of the important things like you know, we see like you know, which will go a little more like you know, is you got to be patient, like you know, in setting up this process, like setting up the projects, like or importing your code and so on. Like you know, the tendency to come, like you know, and then get started on day one, day two is like you know, is more common. But you'll slow, slow and see. See, uh, working with infrastructure team, like you know, is the first thing you need to learn through once the uh, once the project modeling is created. And the Apache infrastructure team, like you know, has a few contractors, but like you know, primarily also has a lot of volunteers. So. You got to be learn, like you know, to be patient. You got to, of course, like you know, when you're here and if you're serious, like find few of them and buy some beers so that you know they'll they'll owe you some favors back. But uh, more importantly, I think like you know, really like you know, go through the documentation. Like you know, they really appreciate that a lot, and they at the same time they get mad if you keep asking the same question, which are obviously find you can find them on the website. And this is a good uh, website, like you know, the infrastructure contact clearly. Uh, uh, lists out like you know what to ask, what to do. For instance, some require uh, the uh, the community vote to be taken off. Like you know, if you are moving from like you know Git to SVN to Git, say, for instance, like you know, you want to do all the prerequisites before you go ask for the infrastructure resources. So, and also like you know, some of the things like you know, you'll be surprised. Uh, and then I'm uh, I'm not an infrastructure person. Uh, I don't uh, contribute to infra, so I'll not speak for them. But like, you'll see that some of them. Uh, like the like the mailing list, like you know, people come and keep coming and asking. Like we use Google Groups. I have this in Google Groups. Like you know, what can I, how can I do the same thing here? And there are like you know, various reasons like you know why infrastructure is set up, is set up in a certain way, and they keep changing. But it may not be the one of the trending cool things like what you will find. So you got to take uh, patience and time to understand some of the reasonings behind them and ask the right questions. And again. A general mailing list is a lot of uh, is a place where you can ask some things like you know where uh, and and most important of all, please search the mailing list archive. So you'll find a lot of uh, answers like you know by just googling them like you know or uh, going through the <coughs> the mailing list archive directly or use tools like Mark Mail and then which archive all the Apache mailing list and you find uh, uh, a good easy way to go through all the mailing Apache ac across the foundation mailing list and so on. So the key things like you know, search a lot of archives and read good documentation, and then like you know, being patient will slowly uh, make you work with the infrastructure team. And especially like you know, if you are if you have a project in GitHub and then you are trying to move, uh, trying to bring that over, you'll see that um, the most frequent questions answered like you know, can we return the code itself in GitHub? Yes and no. First of all, like you know, first the primary copy, the primary. Uh, the copy where read writes are enabled and where you cut the releases will need to be on the Apache infrastructure. So you will uh, you will stop you will freeze your GitHub repository and then like you know you will uh, import all the codes uh, back onto the Apache Git and then like the infra team will uh, mirror it back onto an a slash Apache slash incubator slash pod link like you know link back. So you can continue to engage your community back like you know the way uh, they've been working with the pull requests and so on, but. There are a couple of gotchas you need to realize, and then the, also try and understand the reasoning behind them. So, uh, the, the, the 
one of the important key thing like you know what the foundation has to offer is like you know f so that the developers can focus writing the code and then they don't have to worry about the licensing and legal aspects of it an important aspect of it is the contribution how do the how did the code get into the the project's code base so so a part of the so there is a requirement on all the uh, the contributions have to be committed onto the uh, the project's repository by someone who has their ICLA, the contributor license, uh, license agreement, already filed on, on is on file, or a committer or a PMC member of the project itself. So that requires, like, you know, there's an extra step, like, you know, uh, when uh, before you can automatically merge the pull requests uh, on the GitHub like mirror. So again, like, you know, I'll point some examples on uh, going through some instructions, some previous examples there. And same thing, like you know, the Google Groups, like you know, we get a lot of uh, questions asked on, like you know, can I retain, like can we keep doing our dev mailing list on Google Groups? We like it, no, because um, of all the decisions when all the, especially when you want the foundation to uh, give you a cover for all the legal issues, they have to be archived and then uh, happening on the ASF control infrastructure, including the mailing list. So. There are a lot of like you know ways you can like you know redirect the mails and so on, but like you're really required to use the uh, the Apache provided uh, mailing list here. And then some of the examples you can look at, you'll find a lot more. But like you no, know, I just like you no know, pick like a couple of them here, like the JCloud uh, and then use a grid. Uh, they have like you know being like you know slowly closely watching them. Like you no, know, they have done like with the similar setup. They had this. A GitHub repo plus a Google group, plus I be using uh, GitHub issues and the, all the, uh, the the pull requests and so on, and then like you know, how they transition quickly into using uh, into an in, into the incubation, and then like you know they provide a documentation on how the to their uh, community and how to continue contributing the code back, and then seamlessly like you know with an extra little extra steps, uh, still do the same thing like you know on the on the projects. Um, again, like you know, we'll go back we'll, at the end of the talk. We'll try to leave enough time to ask all the questions. But I'll try to slowly switch gears and like you know, some uh, and to code back some of the things like you know where I learned from our own uh, from our mentors like you know when we are bringing a project uh, into a uh, broadling again, not to at his liking like you know uh, using his uh, green picture here like you know, you'll find him around, uh, you'll find him smiling here, not as uh, uh, we are not this much of the green look, but like you know. The reason being, like, you know, during mentoring, you'll feel that. Like, you know, your mentors are giving you a hard time. Mainly, they're asking you all the questions. And then, of course, you'll, 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 you'll feel that their face turns into a smiley face once you graduated. But, but they do this. And I would say, like, you know, at least I, I felt like, you know, even I felt like, you know, why is Atty doing this? Why is he making us go through this release board so many times? But actually, we've been fortunate, like, you know, have a mentor like him. And then actually, I, I use some of the things I learned from him and in some of the projects I mentored. Where, like, you know, he really, like, you know, what I got impressed with the way Ate was doing is, like, you know, he really jumps in. He never bothers, like, you know, what the code is happening, what the development is happening. And really, when you are releasing, like, you know, he wakes up. And he wakes up and, like, makes you uh, go through the, the lots of RCs within the project podling mailing list itself. And, so again, uh, a key uh, point here is, so each podling, when it gets created, it's called a podling uh, PMC, and then the podling votes on like you know, when they are ready to be released. But actually, like until the project got, uh, graduates, the incubation, so is the, the, the podling is part of the incubation. So the incubator has to vote the podling in. So it needs three binding votes from the incubation. So they could be the mentors themselves, or like you know, you'll take it back to the general mailing list to get like, you know, Validation from other incubator PMC members as well, and then like you know, Roman will talk a little more more about the structures and then then some of the mechanics there. But here, like you know, the emphasis key things like you know, what we learned a lot from like you know, Ate he is like you know, the more time you spend on the podling PMC and then getting your mentor's attention and listening to them and then like fixing all the things they are pointing out, you'll see that like you know, cruising through the general mailing list for the release process makes it a lot more easier. Otherwise, you'll feel like you know, you'll get a lot more opinions, and you need to keep asking a lot more questions. And then, going through like you no know, couple more examples, again like you now we heard like you now this part one one key things I take away from Chris Matman, who used to also mentor our projects, is like you now he keeps keeps uh, reminding everyone 
the open source and then what we are here is uh, we are really in a recruiting business. We are here to in, uh, bring in more and more new committers and uh, contributors to the projects and then uh, Chris constantly reminds and keeps reminding you are doing this. There's an Apache project already doing this. Do you want to use that code, build over? And then like, you know, uh, Chris really uh, pushes for a fast track towards graduation by keep uh, emphasizing right from the beginning, teaching like, you know, how to uh, groom the community to self-govern and then like, you know, and more and more, more and more like the Chris's philosophy is get everyone. If you start seeing someone is contributing, just bring them on board. Like then it doesn't hurt like, you know, someone is on board and they are not active. It, it's okay. Uh, like, you know, and so on. And same thing with commit. There, there are version control system which could be reverted and so on. And then the last example I take on the mentor says, of course, like, you know, uh, from Ross Gardler, like, you know, this I more like, you know, key point out from the academic side because like when we were bringing in from a similar, Ross was coming from that background. And then like Ross was saying today this, like, you know, a lot of people, like, you know, I used to quote him saying that, you know, he says a lot of people think they understand open source, but they really don't open, uh, understand it. And then they can't differentiate between open source versus open community. Like, you know, it's not putting your source out there but really like you know, how open you are to the community contributions and so on. So Ross was quoting that now he sees this trend not just in academia but everywhere now and so on. But again, and one, one thing like, you know, uh, I take a note of Ross's approach here, like, you know, which I try to uh, implement, which is when a project, when, like, when people approach you, like, you know, would you like to champion or mentor our project? We critique them upfront, like make them prepared upfront before they like enter the portaling, what they are getting into, I think that helps a lot. Otherwise, like, you know, the project quickly cruises into and creating their podling, and then they realize, oh, release this, so this, I do I need to go through really? Was this uh, worthwhile? So whereas, like, you know, especially in my, at least in my case, like, you know, Ross was, like, you know, alerted us all of them right away and then said, do you really want to go through this incubation process because these are all the things you need to be going through? And then finally, like, I guess, like, you know, we don't have too many volunteers, like, you know, who've been going through the podlings, but this is more for, of them, like, you know, why you should look back, like, you know, at least, like, you know, when I was, like, you know, going through this bottling experience, like, you know, going through this incubation, why I was really, like, you know, trying to, as soon as the project graduated, looking back was, we have all these vendor, mentors, we have to realize they are all volunteering. They are really spending time to do, help you do the right thing. And then, like, you know, we need to look back and, like, you know, <coughs> pay it forward, like, you know, and helping other projects and continue to engage with the IPMC. And then the next thing, like, you know, is um, the licenses. Like, you know, many a times, like, you know, developers and from the from engineering standpoint, you feel annoyed that, oh, what's all this licenses and notices? I'm not trying to become a lawyer, but uh, why should I learn all of this? And then you really see that, like, that's all there, like, you know, to protect you so that you can continue to code and then, like, the foundation, like, you know, worry about all the legal aspects and protect you that cover. And to do that, you need to follow that process. And then, um, and, and then, and it keeps, you know, you'll see that in the incubation mailing list, like, you know, you'll keep hearing new things which are not documentation and so on. And then, because, like, you know, and then, and these were, like, you know, I find, like, the, pro the graduated projects, like, you know, a lot of value engaging with the portaling, like, because you see this is the most happening place, like, you know, you'll, you'll keep learning. And, like, you know, and I'll turn it back to Roman uh, now, but, like, you'll, you'll find it, like, this is the largest uh, PMC, and then you'll get a lot of opinions, and they're, Sometimes you'll feel it a lot of chaos, but like you no, know, you'll see a lot of benefits. All the benefits like you know, outweigh a lots of uh, uh, or this organically grown uh, volunteer energy here. And then like you know, again, uh, this more for the existing project. Like you no, know, people like you know, think that only SF members, the foundation members, are, can be part of IPMC. And then because you'll see a lot of some of these requests come in on the general mailing list that uh, I'm a nice foundation member. Like you know, can I be part of the IPMC? So. The exception here is yes, uh, the ASF members can just ask and be part of the IPMC, but but IPMC is yet another PMC. And here, the example, like you know, is Roman, like you know, who is now the chair for the uh, the, the PMC here. And then he, uh, he was not a foundation member. He uh, got motivated with all the projects, like once graduated, to give back and contribute back and help help all the podlings here. So so we'll hope, like you know, you'll bring in your projects, like you know, graduate them, and then continue to stay engaged and contribute back. So with that, I'll turn it to Roman to go through some of the mechanics of the incubation itself. All right, can you hear me? Okay, good. <clears throat> well, thank you, Suresh. Uh, 
first of all, thank you for inviting me into this talk because I'm actually pretty new, uh, you know, uh, sort of chair of the incubator, and it still feels a little bit, uh, a little bit amazing to me that you know some of the guys who I consider my mentors at ISF, like you know Jim and Marvin and you know some of the other folks, would actually entrust me, you know, with this responsibility. But I guess it speaks to how stable the incubator is. So like even you know a total noob like myself couldn't really screw it up too much. So. Um, welcome to the factory. Uh, so that's a lot of times what it feels to me, you know, the insides of the incubator. I mean, don't get scared, but uh, there's a lot happening, right? You know, hopefully uh, the output of the process is something that, you know, is really nice. But how we get there, uh, it's an interesting process. In a, in a lot of ways, I mean, I've come to appreciate that incubator probably represents one of the truest sort of uh, communities in the ASF, because if you think about it, ASF has a motto of community over code, right? You know, basically what ASF believes in is if you have a good enough community of people around an idea, then the code will come. And it helps when the community sort of coalesces around the code, but uh, a good code cannot really fix a broken community. A good community can always fix a, you know, bad code. In that sense, I mean, Incubator is probably the truest uh, project because we don't even have code. I mean, we have some documentation, but the gist of the project is the community. So let me talk a little bit about, you know, how the community works. Uh, again, given that, you know, most of you, uh, most of you guys are sort of new to the process, I will not go into te too deep of a detail, you know, level of details, because the idea for this talk is to actually generate some uh, discussion at the end of it, so we really would like it to be interactive. But to give you some food for thought, let me just go through a few things. So what is IPMC good for? Well, first of all, keep in mind that IPMC, when I say IPMC, it stands for Incubator PMC, right? And that is really what it is. It is the incubator. At the end of the day, again, incubator doesn't really have committers, so we don't really have the distinction between, you know, committer on a project versus PMC of the project. Incubator and IPMC are kind of one and the same. Uh, we are typically in the business of, you know, helping incubating projects with understanding what is the Apache way, and uh, that's why you see a lot of people who've been at the foundation for quite a, you know, quite a long time sort of still sticking with the incubator, because this is the first place where people get educated on what it is the Apache way. Because again, you have, you know, these days you have a choice of different open source foundations, and we definitely think that Apache Software Foundation is probably the best home for an Apache licensed, you know, piece of software and, you know, a community to grow around it. Uh, but you have to understand what it is. We have to understand what it represents. Uh, we are also in the business of actually achieving that community growth, right? Uh, so we are there to help you with that. We cannot really substitute your own efforts at you know, community growth, but we can share a lot of uh, feedback with you and we can share uh, a lot of you know, good practices. Uh, but there are also two other things that we kind of have to do uh, because ASF is uh, really diligent about IP, you know, intellectual property, uh, and we have to do that. We have to educate you on how to do that. And same goes for releases as well. Uh, at the end of the day, the foundation, the entire foundation, not just the incubator, is in the business of sort of releasing software. I mean, we are not really there, you know, to talk all the time and, you know, discuss things, but, you know, we're there to basically put tarballs, you know, on, on, on Apache distribution website. Uh, how that is done, it could be new to some of the projects. And to give you an example, uh, I used to be a pretty active committer on the project called FFmpeg. Uh, which is a multimedia, you know, suite of libraries that basically powers all the set-top boxes nowadays. And we had this rule uh, at the project that we do not do releases. Uh, I can go into details explaining why we decided that that was the most useful way of governing the project, but this would definitely not fly with SF, right? So trying to figure out, you know, where the gap is, you know, addressing that gap is what the IPMC is there for you. And what's interesting is, uh, this is a note that sort of just occurred to me. I started, you know, this new gig at Pivotal, and all of a sudden there's all these people asking me, like, oh, we need to open source this piece of software and that piece of software. Can you figure out, you know, what to do? Can you help us? And all of a sudden I'm thinking to myself, we probably have to have some document in the company. And then I'm like, well, but I know a pretty good document, and in fact, I know a pretty good set of processes of how it's done. It's actually something that's been codified by the Apache Incubator. So if you happen to be in a position within your company where you are the only guy who knows open source, actually look at the documentation that Incubator and IPMC have collectively developed, because it probably will be the best starting point 
for your legal process to begin with, because if you don't have that sort of those you know shoulders of giants to step on, I could not tell you how ugly the legal uh, take on what open source process should be could be. I mean, it's just like these guys are good at what they do. They absolutely don't get what makes a good open source project. So with that in mind, let me actually cover a little bit what incubator is definitely not. Because, you know, we now understand that we do Apache Way, you know, all of that, but uh, there's a lot, quite a few misconceptions, and I think a lot of times when you see people arguing about the mission of the incubator, or, you know, that the incubator is sometimes maybe not sort of delivering on their expectations, what I've noticed uh, a lot of times it's the expectations that need to be adjusted. Well, sometimes it's we who need to change, but you know, a lot of times you kind of have to understand what incubator is not. And uh, first of all, we're not actually, again, we're not actually a project that is sort of consists of people that get paid for what we do. And there are a number of software foundations where you know, the mission of the incubator is run by paid employees uh, so I've just had a nice chat with you know, OpenStack uh, Foundation. They actually have a pretty focused effort on growing the community, and that focused effort is actually being run by people who get paid for it, right? You know, we are just a bunch of volunteers. So if, for example, you don't get a reply from us uh, you know, next day, well, do realize that we try our best to be helpful, but at the end of the day, we're a bunch of volunteers. Probably the best sort of, you know, the, the best uh, example of, you know, misconception that I've ever come across has been addressed by a friend of mine, Chris Douglas, when, you know, during one of the discussions, he basically posted on the mailing list saying, saying you guys should realize that Incubator is actually a curriculum. It's not a community. It's a curriculum for new projects coming into the Apache Software Foundation. We're there to teach. We're, we're there not to form sort of a unified opinion, but to help and teach how the community should behave. And again, that goes back to saying that, you know, we have a very special project. But again, once you realize what we're good at and what we're not, I think a lot of things become much clearer. Uh, we are not a small group of folks. So I have some statistics, you know, later on where we're basically close to 200 people of the IPMC. We probably are the biggest IPMC in all of the Apache family. Uh, getting a full-fledged you know, Apache-flavored consensus between 200 people is very tough. So again, whenever any discussion happens, you should be prepared for the fact that you know, between 200 people, you will get 200 different opinions, and you know, reconciling everything is a tough thing to do. We still manage not to ruin it, you know, so there is hope, but you know, the process sometimes takes longer than you know, on some of the other uh, PMC mailing lists. We're not a group of folks who are active all the time, so you will see you know, some of the dormant uh, members of the IPMC, people who helped with some of the projects, but then decided to you know, move on or you know, uh, contribute to sort of core projects more. And that's fine. Uh, we appreciate their you know, participation, even if it's passive participation. Uh, and I actually haven't seen you know, a lot of people sort of going emeritus on IPMC, but I guess that could also happen. Uh, at the end of the day, you're basically dealing with a group of people who is extremely knowledgeable, but not necessarily sort of engaged all the time, 100% you know, of the time. An incubator is, I hate to break it to you, incubator is definitely not the place to fix a broken community. If you have a broken community on your hands, uh, be it a you know, corporate breakage or just community breakage, you shouldn't look at the incubator as the sort of ultimate cure. You should figure out you know, what's, what's wrong with the community first, and then we can help you sort of make that community better, but we're not in a position to cure all ills of open source. Unfortunately, that's just what we're not doing. Uh, so, very quickly, what does incubator consist of? Well, there's a bunch of terms that you will run into uh, once you start engaging uh, with us, and I think I'll just very quickly go through them to give you flavor of what is it that people will be talking to you about. Uh, so, in the, at the incubator, you will meet champions, sponsors, mentors, committers, chair of the IPMC, that would be me for now, uh, and project shepherds. So, you know, quite a bit of list. Uh, so, what are the roles and responsibilities for all, all of these actors? Well, champions are like, you know, as Suresh was pointing out, you basically have to have somebody who is an officer or a member of the SF Foundation, uh, kind of being the first guy to feel that the project is actually of a benefit to an ASF or of a particular TLP project within the ASF. This is the guy with whom you know, everything starts, right? Uh, 
this is your sort of single point of contact, if you will, you know, for a little while, because you know, the hope is that you will grow uh, the set of mentors, and the mentors will end up being the boots on the ground, you know, helping your community. But for quite some time during the uh, proposal process, that will be the single uh, point of context. Uh, and it's your best asset of, you know, navigating through IPMC initially. So befriend your champion. Uh, sponsor is actually kind of interesting because sponsor is an entity. It's not even a human being. Sponsor is an entity within the Apache Software Foundation that has to feel uh, the same way that the champion feels, that the project, you know, that is being brought to the incubator will be of benefit. And it used to be that uh, TLP projects would be in the position of sponsoring. But I think, like again, Suresh pointed out, we are sort of trying to move away from that. So most of the time you will see that the sponsoring entity is the incubator itself. So we, our collective will of all the IPMC, basically feels like your project is you know, really good, so we should bring it into the ASF fold. Uh, but it used to be that you could go, go through, let's say, Hadoop, and a lot of projects became you know, uh, sub-projects of Hadoop that way, and later on graduated to be TLP. But I don't think we're sort of uh, exercising that much uh, these days. Uh, mentors, like I said, I mean, it's basically incubators, boots on the ground. These are the members of the IPMC who, who can help you with day-to-day -day activities, right? So once the champion has done a, you know, his or her job, you will end up with a bunch of mentors, and these are the people typically, you know, between like three to seven, you know, depending on uh, how big the project is, who will help you through the process. Uh, they are also a dreaded source of three IPMC votes. <laughs> so there is a rule in the incubator community that like I said, one of the things that we are teaching you is how to do releases. And one of the things about you know, doing releases sort of according to the Apache way is that releases, a release has to be a transparent process that takes good care of you know, IP licensing, you know, uh, just putting bits out there, all the nitty gritty details. Mentors are the guys who are basically saying we're rubber stamping this release, right? We you know, have the plus one on it saying that this release that is coming out of the incubating project is good enough to be sort of as good as you know, TLP project. A lot of times people complain about it because uh, mentors can be slightly you know, absent at times and hunting for that you know, last third PMC vote could be a challenge. And that's why Marvin has started a really good you know, metric on how long it takes you know, for the uh, project to receive a you know, third PMC vote, which is a useful thing in itself because you know, we at Incubator need to be informed of like, if you have problems with your mentors, because you know, that could happen too, then we need to have some ways of actually telling what is, it, what is the problem, right? Finally, I mean, you basically get committers. I mean, the guys who are actually developing the software. And uh, one thing to realize is that PPMC, which is project PMC during the incubation, is not IPMC. So PPMC is like the core group of folks who are hacking on the project. IPMC is the oversight, you know, it's the ASF uh, uh, organization. But committers could be something else as well. So typically what you have, you have a group of committers and you have a subset of them who are essentially PPMC, right? And typically you would have PPMC include all of your mentors. Uh, when the project graduates, it's up to the project to decide who will be on the uh, final list of the PMC for the top level project that is basically nominated to be, uh, you know, when the nomination is submitted to the Apache board. Uh, so chair of the PM IPMC, that would be me for now. I won't talk, you know, long about it. I'm basically a li liaison to Apache board. You know, I do a lot of like reporting and stuff. Uh, and, you know, I just crank away at the, crank, you know, that's, that's what I do. Um, Project Shepherds are kind of interesting concept. So it's a little bit of like who is policing the policeman type of a situation, I suppose. Uh, so like I'm saying, incubator is big, right? So we have a scalability issue. Uh, how do we solve it? Well, Shepherds. Shepherds are the guys who are essentially looking into what's going on you know, with the projects. And they help me. So when I have to submit a report for all of the project at the incubator, I basically leverage them uh, for that mission. So that's the list of things that you will encounter in ASF. And Koss is helpfully pointing out that I, once again, you know, used all the time for just, you know, talking about stuff. Uh, so how much time do we have left? <laughs> okay. Uh, so let me very quickly jump to one of the slides that I think is really important. And again, if we don't sort of have too many questions, I can go through, you know, the rest of the slides, but 
let me try to actually open it up for discussion. So how are we doing? You know, some of the stats, uh, like I said, I mean, the IPMC size is 196 people at, the, at this moment. So, you know, really big IPMC. We have 32 incubating projects and uh, a shepherd community is around, you know, 10, 10 people. I really would encourage you to be, to, you know, considering, you know, a shepherding assignment, because if you are curious at all about incubator, being a shepherd is the easiest way to get a taste of what it, be, what it is to be sort of on the IPMC, what it is to be, you know, helping all these projects. It's not as time consuming and it is not as, uh, you know, well, I guess it's not as rewarding as being a full-fledged IPMC member, but uh, it's a really good way of getting a taste for it. And if you like it, you can then say, well, I would really like to help more. Or if you don't like it, you could always say like, no, I, I'm out of cycles. I cannot really help you with shepherding assignments anymore. Uh, so release count, basically IPMC, at the end of the day, we have to, you know, collectively validate all of the releases, and we actually, in a sense of, you know, dozen releases a month need to be validated, you know, typically. Uh, which is, again, very different from all the other projects where, you know, you typically have released, like, I mean, every quarter maybe, you know, every half a year. Uh, IPMC voting today, remember I talked about how long it takes, you know, for the third IPMC vote to arrive? It takes anywhere between one to 20 days. 20 days is way, 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 way too long. We should not have that number. I'm not proud of that number, but you know, it still happens, so hopefully we can, we can do better. Uh, and we're still an undisputed champions of monthly board report size. You know, I cannot possibly understand how the board meetings you know, go through incubator reports, but I guess you know, they just trust us. Uh, so with that, um, open discussion. So, what do you guys think? I mean, if you have a project, what's stopping you? Uh, sorry, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you have a project, what's stopping you from bringing the incubator? If you have a company on the start policy, you know, let's talk about that. If you have an already incubating project, you know, let's talk about that. So, man in the back, who I think I recognize. No, you couldn't. Um, I'm not sure if this is the right, the right forum to ask, but. Uh, there to be the benefits of um, for a project that is already an open source, say, right? Um, on the and stuff like that. What benefits? Uh, let me let, let me take a stab at it, and then I will uh, pass it to Suresh. But again, like if you guys have your own opinion, because I see some of the pretty well established, you know, TLP projects here. So, you know, big project, you know, some of the other projects. So take a stab at it as well. But here's my answer. So uh, first of all, I think the collective sort of experience of Apache Software Foundation could be quite an asset, answering all sorts of questions ranging from legal issues to sort of how do you get to consensus, you know, with big projects. So I would, at this point, appreciate that. You know, looking at myself, I don't know, five, seven years back, I didn't care about any of that, right? Back then, I guess what I would have pitched as, you know, one of the really useful bits of ASF is that, well, if you look at ASF, you know, ASF is essentially uh, making it safe for enterprises and big businesses to consume open source software. So ASF collectively as an organization doesn't quite indemnify, but basically gives this umbrella where you can develop software that is very extremely easy to ingest into products. So if you're an enterprise developing a product, ingesting an open source piece of that is coming from the ASF is way easier from legal perspective than ingesting just a random GitHub project. So I would actually do, you know, uh, talk about these two things. I think that you covered it very well. Like, well, Quick follow-up question. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So th these are great, you know, benefits. But see, I have a successful project. I decided to open to open uh, put it in open source. And my consideration would be like, what if my uh, competitors on on ISF IPMC will take over? <laughs> Is it a legit? Because I'm I'm hearing this right. Um, as I understand it, you said what happens if um, your competitors in the PMC take over? Um, well, the thing is, is that um, 
when you do migrate a project to the ASF, you, you basically are relinquishing control of the direction in the future of that project to the whims, desires of the community at large as defined by the PMC. Um, and so uh, it, it, it's quite possible that if you have a, a, a singular direction for it and everyone else within the PMC would have a different take on the direction for it, then there would be conflict. And quite frankly, there have been um, a handful of ASF projects in which that's, that has happened. Um, the, uh, the, the, the thing about that, and, and as Roman was saying earlier, uh, it allows a project to outgrow the desires and the free cycle time of a single contributor. So if, for example, um, something else tickles your fancy and you decide, you know what, I, I want to focus on something else, well, um, the project itself, because it has this healthy, viable community in the form of a PMC and the other community around it, um, people who are leveraging it, either for commercial reasons or other reasons, realize that this project will continue to go on despite the ebb and flow of one, two, three, you know, members in there as well. Um, Criteria for graduation. So, what you come like you know, if you come with like uh, if you take a look at one by one, like you know, if you look at the community aspect, you already have an engaged community, and like from wherever you're coming in, it makes it easier to get to graduate. And because you have like you know, there are some of them are like you know, are more arguable things like do you really need to demonstrate diversity or but but the more important aspects are you need to demonstrate openness. You mean to demonstrate the Apache way of give, putting the community in front of the core, like you know, and, and those kind of aspects. If you already have some, like you know, that makes it a quicker to graduate. If you do not have one, some, like you might take it longer to, to graduate, and then like you can do that. So there's, so the, the minimum is more. I would say I don't think so. Like there's a hard minimum, but uh, more like, but there are, there are minimum for graduation, not more than minimum for entry. Like right? that's the way I look at it. Yeah. So let, let me actually give, give a personal story because, again, I ask the very same question, okay. and on the note of what have we all learned from our mentors. A few years ago, you know, there was a proposal for the incubator of a project that basically had no code base. So I will not mention the name of the project, uh, but it had no code base. And back then I was like all about hacking and code and I'm like, well, you mentors, tell me, like, is it even worth considering? Should we just like say no to them? Cause like, what's good there? And the response that I get from, you know, a good friend of mine, again, Chris Douglas was, no, look, I mean, it's really all about the community of people, you know, trying to do something together, right? So if they convince us that what they're trying to do is reasonable and useful, and if we have, you know, trust in that the community that is the initial community is reasonable enough, to some extent the code base doesn't matter. We believe that they will develop the code base, just like they will develop a true community around the project. And if they don't, well, then they just don't graduate. I mean, as simple as that. So there is no, there is no harm in trying. There is no sort of minimum barrier to entry, except you know, maybe you personally and a few, you know, luckily a few other people just feeling really passionate about an idea. Yeah, and there also the retirement aspects of the projects too, like, you know, which we didn't go because, like, you know, being in, like, you know, the, the board report when they even after the project graduates or, like, you know, before the project graduates to the incubation and, and then to the board, we'll be taking note of how well, when are you recruiting, like, you know, bringing new committees on board, are you releasing frequently, is the project dormant and so on. So, as Roman is saying, like, you know, the sense is more will this project has a chance to graduate and then like survive or like no will this it has to be more like more convincing early on giving the chance of a promise and then more uh, up during the incubation delivering on the problem and speaking of the project that
No, not yet. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.